Hello everybody and today I have a shred build for you. This is a shred trample slide build. This is using the subterranean aspect that the poison creeper uses to cast landslide in order to help reset it so you can continue to keep doing those fat blurred beast hits. So if you like the werebear version of this that I had made using changeling's debt but you wanted to be a werewolf I think you're going to like this build a lot. So first off in terms of how the build works we're going to be using the trample slide stuff so landslide earth pillars strike an additional time. We're also going to be using you know trample now summon six landslide pillars. Uh, trample is now also a nature magic earth magic skill you know typical trample slide stuff but then we're also going to be using things like aspect of the blurred beast while dashing shred seeks out nearby poisoned enemies uh, then we have you know the poisonous creeper active also cast a landslide in a circle around you so when you factor this in and this in and then you also factor in that we're taking uh, the primal landslide you're going to get guaranteed crits which is then going to help you proc uh, your pack leader more so you can get more consistent resets that's the reason kind of why i like this build is because i feel like out of all of the ways that i have played the build this build has the most consistent resets on poison creeper now it's still there are still moments when it is down unfortunately guys the pack leader is just it, if you don't understand how lucky hit chance work you're really getting like four percent if you don't have any lucky hit chance and maybe you get up to like i don't know like five to eight percent if you have lucky hit chance on all your gear so unfortunately the um, the actual chance to reset it and it also happens only on crit so the actual chance to reset it can be kind of low uh, but this does reset it the most frequently out of any I've seen and once I get better gear I'm pretty confident that the resets are just going to be really really good so let's go ahead and hop on into the rest of it so helm you have basic skills grant 20% damage reduction you're going to want things like ranks of poison creeper total armor CDR and max life I think are going to be the best things on the helm on the chest piece, you can use Mad Wolf's Glee. You do not need this. This 100% is not mandatory. And the higher up you go, this is actually not good to use. Um, but if you do not have a Mad Wolf's Glee, go ahead, throw on Aspect of Disobedience, uh, and look for quad damage reductions on your chest piece. Uh, or you can do three damage reductions and companion skill damage isn't too bad. Uh, and keep in mind, again, you do not need Mad Wolf's Glee. I'm just using this uh, honestly because I actually don't have a good chess piece that had uh, triple damage reductions on it. So I figured I'd just use this. And it's also pretty fun to use this while you can because the lower you are, uh, the easier it is to use this. And this is honestly a pretty fun unique. It's fun being a werewolf all the time. So uh, next, we have the aspect of retaliation. Core skills are going to deal up to 34% damage based on your amount of fortify. Uh, we're going to go ranks to shred like you hit chance, crit chance, and attack speed. Going to be the stats on that. Uh, on the pants, it's going to be uh, earthen bulwark. So this is going to be a way to get unstoppable with earthen bulwark and trample. So you want to make sure you have this just so you can have unstoppable a little bit longer. And you're going to be looking for quad damage reductions. Uh, you know, so these pants right here, while they're sacred, are actually pretty good in terms stat-wise. Uh, so here, this is going to be kind of an interesting one. So the reason why we use this is because it gives us access to stun, which gives us another crowd control effect. And by having another crowd control effect, that procs with our creeping death. So your damage over time effects are increased by 36.5% for each different crowd control effect on the target. So if we're able to slow with poison, if we're then able uh, to also stun with our primal sabatons of audacity, right? We're stacking more effects and then you even have a knockback effect as well with trample. So, you know, just by by stacking the most effects possible, you're going to deal more damage. Another thing you can run if you have them is Pentient Greaves. I know that sounds weird, but it puts chill on them. So chill, which I believe is also another crowd control effect, should also proc this as well. So that's... Um, that's pretty sweet. So on the boots, I would say damage reduction while injured, move speed, uh, percent total armor and werewolf form, and then some main, one of the main stats like int willpower is probably fine. Uh, okay, so then on the weapon, landslides, earth pillars, deal additional time. We've seen this, but in stat wise, you're gonna want critical strike damage, critical strike damage with werewolf skills. Uh, I would say uh, damage. I would say poison damage isn't bad with this, and then vulnerable damage. Uh, honestly, like this would be pretty good if I just swapped the damage to crowd controlled enemies to vulnerable, I think. Uh, this one would be pretty sweet. Uh, and then you're going to want the critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies in that. So here's, I just don't have a, a good devious one yet. I need to go uh, farm one up. But for the devious slot, I would recommend, mm, I would say, I, I would, I would recommend probably using the caged huh? 
No, nah, not I don't think any innings on before force would be that good. Well, I think in terms of stacking creeping death, using the caged heart of the calculated isn't bad because after spending a certain amount of resource, it makes your next attack stun things. So that can be pretty good. But another thing you can do too is find an amulet that just doesn't have a devious one on it and go for the caged heart of revenge. So this is a brutal heart. Uh, the caged heart of revenge, it suppresses all the damage you take and then you explode for that damage. I honestly think that would be super sweet for this build. Uh, but unfortunately, I just don't have an amulet that had the stats that I need on this to do that. But it's going to be using uh, Storm Claws. Uh, you got ranks of Call of the Wild, damage reduction enemies that are poisoned, uh, ranks of all companion skills. And ideally, you want CDR for the last stat. But if you do have damage reduction like I do on this, that's not bad. Like, you can really never go wrong, in my opinion, with damage reduction. I mean, you do want the CDR because it's going to help your poison creeper come off cooldown faster it's going to help your trample come off cooldown your earthen bulwark etc right so you can see the cooldown for this right now is currently 13.53 seconds so if i had just a little bit more cooldown i could potentially be getting this more uh, down more because i only have 6.4 here you know none here and then i also don't have any here so you could pretty much get your earthen bulwark onto a extremely low cooldown if you had uh, good cdr rules if not having it up virtually all the time depending on if the barrier is breaking or not yeah. So then uh, for the ring, for the ring stats, I'm going to say uh, go vulnerable, critical strike damage, critical strike chance, and lucky hit chance are going to be good on your rings. And then on, oh my god, this thing is just so bad. <laughs> this is so bad, but it had a really high, it's the, it had a really high weapon damage on it, so I'm using it. But um, anyway, you're going to want CDR, critical strike chance, um, damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned. And then probably a main stat like dexterity or something's fine, or you could do damage reduction while fortified would also be pretty good. So just to keep stacking those damage reductions, but yeah, that's it for these stats. Spirit moon wise, we're just going wariness, scythe talons, uh, avian wrath for damage. You can get rid of avian wrath and go iron feather you want if you want more defense. Uh, pack leader, obviously to reset our companion skills and then masochistic. I mean, masochistic really is like the only thing that's good in this one to take but it's been nerfed significantly because it's had a lucky hit thing attached to it which kind of blows moving on to the skills we have storm strike enhanced storm strike fear storm strike uh, we're going to have heart of the wild wild impulses and i'll have a link in the description below that has all the stuff on it you know we got landslide enhanced landslide primal landslide now i don't have this maxed out because i'm more focused on the shred but i guess if you wanted to uh, you could take some points out of some, actually I don't know I don't know if I'd recommend that but I don't know if I would actually recommend doing that you probably should just run it this way because you the idea of it's a shred build but this is mainly just here to try to help you get resets and I think if you try to put a bunch of points into this one it's going to make you take away things that are like really good for shreds like for example this I guess if you didn't need the damage reduction you could do this but this one's pretty cool because since it is a trample build you are going to be shape shifting into a wear bear and back and forth so you get really good use at a natural fortitude quick shift and heightened senses right so pretty pretty sweet stuff makes pretty good use of that but i guess if you wanted to get rid of these passives you could max out landslide maybe a little bit more but um i in this version we're not really trying to focus on maxing out landslide it's really more about the shred anyway so shred enhanced shred primal shred make sure you take primal shred because it's going to make shred uh, your third attack or sorry your second and third attack also dash which means that you can actually proc blurred beast with your second and third attack if you do not have that you will only be able to proc blurred beast with your first attack so this is kind of mandatory <clears throat> uh, you know go ahead and take predatory strength for extra crit wild impulses for more core skill damage earthen bulwark enhanced earthen bulwark preserving earthen bulwark just to make yourself unstoppable then we got blood howl enhance blood howl and innate blood howl this is just another heal so you have like a second potion that comes off cooldown as you kill things we want call of the wild to make our poison creeper deal more damage then we want poison creeper enhanced poison creeper brutal poison or sorry ferocious poison creeper now you might ask why we don't use this and the main reason is because of just damage so if you look here it says 33 we take it off it's at 16 this literally doubles the damage of your poison creeper and by double and once you send it through the multipliers of like blurred beast it's just too good to not take this one uh, if you're early on though like super early on and you just and it's not it doesn't really matter anyway for you to have all that damage uh, you could take this just for more crit if you're lacking crit for pack leader but i wouldn't recommend it i'd say 
ferocious poison creeper is good because even if you are low level this should just be one shotting everything okay so then we're going to take crushing earth and then safeguard this is just uh, another way to get fortified that i like so whenever we use our trample and our poison creeper that's going to make both of these kind of just fortify us which can be pretty sweet uh, trample uh, enhanced trample and savage trample if you're having any issues with the fortify you can take this but you shouldn't be so i think savage trample is pretty good to get the 40 spirit and then we have neurotoxin uh, toxic claws this is another way to apply poison in venom cr increased critical strike damage pretty sweet and then the quick shift heightened senses natural fortitude and lupine ferocity right Okay, because we are with Bird B, since you dash around, you do a lot of werewolf skill hits really fast. So you proc Lupine Ferocity quite a bit, and it gives you a 70% damage amp on that critical strike. So, and it also, you know, gives you a guaranteed critical strike. So it also helps with that as well. Okay, so in terms of Paragon, since I'm only level 65, uh, it's not really that beneficial for me to go through the Paragon here because I just don't have a whole lot. And I actually think I still need to change mine from uh, when I was doing. Uh, the wear bear stuff but yeah you can see here i have like next to nothing the only thing i can say is that early on uh, i would recommend maybe taking something like spirit or exploit once you get it and throw that in here and then i think the first one the most beneficial one to take is actually wilds because it increases your poison creeper damage by so much uh, so i'm actually a pretty big fan but if you don't want to put if you don't want to start off having so much emphasis on the poison creeper and you want more consistency or something you could go like territorial first or something like that it just gives you more damage to close enemies but um you're definitely going to want something like spirit or exploit because this is just such a good you know increasing your critical strike damage especially when you get guaranteed crits this is really a huge uh, a really really big socket but i don't even hardly have any of my paragon so your paragon doesn't going to matter a whole lot more until you get to like actually like level 80 to where you actually have a decent amount of paragon top of getting your renown and stuff but yeah so i'll have a link in the description with the full paragon tree but yeah so that's going to do it so let's go ahead and get on to some gameplay all right so here we are inside of a mall wood now this is level 75 plus this is a very this is a basic dungeon however it is level 75 it is 10 levels higher than me so let's see what we can do with this build so far so good the cool thing about this again is that you don't necessarily need to use uniques so this gives us access to things like disobedience it gives us access to things like uh aspect of might and that's huge whenever you're trying to push higher than uh kind of i guess push the the envelope of the pay grade here right now preferably i actually want to get rid of mad wolf's glee because i really want aspect of disobedience but the thing is is i just don't have a good chess piece so mad wolf's glee is actually better and i'm also not at a point where it's going to make that big of a difference like as you can see this really isn't too bad okay Just wait for poison creeper to come back up Ish. and this oh oh out of spirit okay that's fine so i know this this does feel like it has a tad bit less burst than what the werebear version does because you have to remember you have to do a little bit more setup than this you don't just you know use poison creeper and then auto detonate the poison all right you have to use blurred beast now that being said blurred beast does not consume the poison so if stuff doesn't die you can then use it again okay oh. my gosh there we go yeah, so not too bad, but this version is definitely tankier. I have much easier time pushing higher with this one because the defenses are just so much higher because of Aspect of Might and your Storm Strike. Uh, not only that, the Werebear version I've noticed is it feels a little bit less functional in terms of... Because you're really like relying on uh, like either hard casting Landslide or the abilities, so it felt like to me that it was harder to keep up storm strike for some reason in that version where this one's definitely much more up close and personal so it's a little bit different right okay Ooh. careful here wait for it okay bam get that done there it is awesome and it seems like the, just the even the base like without blurred beast shred does a pretty decent chunk of damage uh maybe even a little bit more than what my landslide was doing in terms of like if when i'm just base casting shred or base casting landslide so that's kind of interesting 
okay, but we will keep on going. But I definitely like, even if this one has a little bit more setup, a little bit more burst, the survivability really is, it's the key thing here, especially in the early stages, because when you can push this high, I can now get into world tier four. Whereas when I was doing dungeons with the Werebear version, since I was using Insatiable Fury and Vastly's in order for that one to work, it really made my, uh, it really made my damage reduction not so great. So, and once I, in the moment I find a good chess piece, I'm going to be switching over to Disobedience, I think, because that's going to make it, that's going to just be the cherry on, the cherry on top, you know. Yeah, because I can tell you that there's probably, I probably would have died, because like, I, the, I've been kind of trying to push and see how early I can do World Tier 4, and... Right now, on the Werebear version, I'm semi-comfortable, but on this version, I am, like, very comfortably doing World Tier 4 now, so. I'll definitely start be, start playing on that and start just farming Ancestrals and stuff like that, but. Okay. Bam. Now, this is, the, this is another downside, is that, unfortunately, um, Suppressor is kind of annoying, because, like, Hold on. If you use if you use your dash outside of the suppressor, I don't know if it's a bug, but sometimes the damage doesn't go through, so you have to like get right out see like that, like right out on the edge there of the suppressor. So that's another kind of downside to it that I don't like. I don't and I don't know if that's intended if it's supposed to be like that, but yeah. yeah. And this does use storm claws as well. So you have a little bit of like lightning damage and stuff here, but I'm not even 100% certain storm claws is necessary. I was actually thinking about maybe going a, a tad bit different route. Oh. Freaking damage reduction. Come on now. There we go. Yep, so then we just kind of wait for our cooldowns. This is kind of a cooldown dependent build. But it does have it does help that we're using the landslide because it is going to help reset things more. That is for sure. And I have also noticed that I don't know if it's if it has something to do with subterranean, but blurred beast seems a little bit buggy. Like sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm actually proccing the damage for whatever reason. But then other times, you know, like right here, yeah, you see that 150,000 crit, not bad. And this isn't even, not really even coming close to dying either, so. Very happy with how this is, how this is going. Eh, not gonna do last stand. Not quite. So I don't want this to take too long, but. Alright, let's go here. Bam. Definitely a different kind of build, you know, high, it's like a hybrid of Landslide and Shred. But I really just, I, I really like the Landslide aspect of it because it really just, it really helps kind of get more Poison Creeper resets. Now that being said, uh, that does not mean that it always, that does not mean that it always resets still because you have to remember, um, re the chance, the chance to actually reset is like really low. It's like, God, I don't know. It's a, first off, it's on crit, and then I want to say like if you don't have any lucky hit chance on your gear, you might be getting four percent out of pack leader, maybe. So, still, still very. It definitely still has some conditions to it. That is for sure. That is for shizzle my nizzle. Right, let's see here, yeah, see. V8. Do that. And 144. So definitely get some, yeah, 150. We definitely get some fatty crits in this. And keep in mind, there is a, there really isn't a reason to be going 10 levels higher. You only get 15% increased experience. So for the difficulty, right? Like, you definitely don't have to be doing this. I'm just... I'm just being impatient and like trying to push into world tier four as fast as I can. But yeah, see, woo, bam, there it is. Okay. Oh, 
so I'm, I've been working on this one just so I can get into World Tier 4, level up a little bit faster. But like if I was level 70, oh my gosh, just, whoa, would that say 200? My gosh. Okay, well, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Hope you like the build. I hope you like the fact that it really does not require any uniques to operate and is actually better without uniques. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you next time. Thanks.